before you start this video, you're definitely going to want to review all the confidence interval stuff using the resampling, because here we're going to talk about resampling, but in the context of hypothesis testing. So if you need a little refresher on bootstrap and resampling, then go ahead and look back at that before you check back in here. All right, so this video is going to be about hypothesis testing using randomization. So sometimes it's called randomization-based hypothesis testing or resampling or sometimes permutation tests. All right, so the idea, the general idea is that we're going to take our original data and resample it. So let's compare the classical hypothesis testing stuff, like using distributions, um, so that we can better understand how randomization-based hypothesis testing is going to work. So in the classical stuff, where we use like normal distributions and that sort of thing, um, we start off by choosing our test statistic, and then we calculate our test statistic for our data, and then we need to know the sampling distribution of our test statistic so that we can calculate the p-value. So essentially, we're comparing our test statistic to its sampling distribution under that null hypothesis so that we can decide whether our particular test statistic is extreme compared to the null hypothesis. So if it is extreme, remember, then we would reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. All right, so the idea of randomization-based hypothesis testing is pretty similar. The main difference is the sampling distribution. So in the classical hypothesis testing stuff, we assume that we know the sampling distribution. So sometimes like it's a normal distribution or a T distribution, something like that. Um, in the randomization-based hypothesis testing, we are going to use computing to create our sampling distribution under the null hypothesis. All right, so what are the steps? So first step is the same as usual. We choose our um, test statistic and we calculate our test statistic for that original data set that, that we have. All right, now instead of comparing our test statistic to some sampling distribution like a normal or a T, we're going to create our sampling distribution under the null hypothesis. So what we're going to do is resample the data a very large number of times, and then for each resample, we're going to calculate that test statistic for that resampled data. So um, we'll resample the data, calculate the test statistic, store that away somewhere. Resample the data again. Now we have a new resample, calculate the test statistic, store that test statistic away somewhere. So we'll do this over and over and over, maybe like 1,000, 10,000 times, so that we have 1,000 or 10,000 test statistics built under the null hypothesis. So then we'll have all of these test statistics built under the null hypothesis. So we'll have some distribution. So here are all the different test statistics that we would get under that null hypothesis. And then we would compare our particular test statistic from the original data, so maybe that's like here, and we would decide whether that's extreme or not by looking at the proportion of test statistics that are just as extreme or more extreme than our particular test statistic. So for example, if we saw a test statistic that was like somewhere pretty close to the middle, then it would be pretty obvious our original data's test statistic is not extreme under the null hypothesis. But if we saw a test statistic that was like way out here in the tail, then um, it would be likely that we would end up rejecting the null hypothesis because the proportion of test statistics that are just as extreme as that original data set's test statistic or more extreme is pretty low. We don't have many test statistics under the null hypothesis that are just as extreme as this one or more extreme. All right, so we um, compare our original data set's test statistic against all the test statistics that we've created under the null hypothesis. All right, so the nice thing about this randomization-based hypothesis testing stuff is that it's super flexible. So lots of times you'll be um, working on a data analysis and you don't have an exact cookie cutter method to use. You won't be able to just like do a two sample t-test or something straightforward like that. Um, most of the time data in the real world is a lot more difficult to work with. Maybe there are some complex dependencies or something that you need to take into account. So you might be able to choose a test statistic and then use this randomization-based hypothesis testing stuff to get a p-value and do a hypothesis testing in this way, using the randomization instead of using some distribution, since you don't know the actual distribution. 
Okay, so let's do an example so that we can see how this works. So in this example, we're trying to compare two means and see whether one mean is greater than the other mean. So let's let mu1 be the mean hot wing consumption for men and mu2 be the mean hot wing consumption for women. So our null hypothesis is these two means are equal and what we're wondering is do men on average consume more hot wings than women? So alternative hypothesis is mu1 is greater than mu2. All right, so let's look at our original data set. Um, here it is, we have the number of wings and then the sex of each person. So this first woman ate four wings, the next woman ate five wings, this one ate six wings, seven, seven, seven. And then we have five male observations, uh, six wings, seven wings, eight, eight, and 11. Okay, so if we, com um, if we calculate the mean number of hot wings consumed for women, we'd see that is six, and the mean number of hot wings consumed by men in this data set is eight. So since we are testing mu1 is equal to mu2 versus the alternative hypothesis mu1 is greater than mu2, another way we could write this alternative hypothesis is mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero. Okay, so it would make sense, since this is our alternative hypothesis, to use our test statistic of x bar one minus x bar two. So in other words, if we calculate x bar one minus x bar two, we have eight minus six, which is two. So in other words, in our data set, men ate two more wings on average than women did. All right, so our big question is, is this number two, is this a lot, or is this not very much? Okay, so if this test statistic, x bar one minus x bar two equals two, if that test statistic is big compared to the test statistic that we would get under the null hypothesis where the two means are equal, if this two is big, then we're going to end up rejecting the null hypothesis that men and women eat an equal number of hot wings on average. And we're going to reject it in favor of the alternative, which is saying that men on average eat more hot wings than women. All right, so we have our test statistic, x bar one minus x bar two. We've calculated it for our original data set, which is a test statistic of two. And now we need to do this step of resampling the data a huge number of times to determine whether two is extreme or not that extreme under the null hypothesis. Okay, so we're going to choose a uh, large Monte Carlo sample size, maybe like m equals 10 to the four or 10 to the five, something like that. And we're going to do this next step a whole bunch of times. We're going to do it m times. So what we're going to do is shuffle the data so that we're essentially randomly assigning observations to either male or female. In a, and in our original data set, we have six women and five men. So what we're going to do is randomly choose six of these observations to be assigned to women and five of the observations to be assigned to men. And then we're going to calculate our test statistic using that random reassignment. All right, so we're erasing the actual original data's assignment of men and women while we're doing one resample. Okay, so maybe we use a random number generator or something like that, and we select at random six of these to be female. So maybe this one, this one, those six are assigned to be female, and then the remaining five are assigned to be male. All right, so this is now one resample. We've randomly assigned six of these original data points to be women, five of the original data points to be men, and we've done this at random. All right, so now we can calculate x bar one minus x bar two for this original, sorry, for this resample. All right, so this is what we do a whole bunch of times. We're calculating the test statistic for that resample, and then we're going to again erase all of these assignments and do this whole step again. So we're going to again resample the data calculate the test statistic for that resample. Resample the data, calculate the test statistic for that resample over and over and over until we have a good number of test statistics. All right, once we have all of those 
test statistics, we're going to have like 10 to the 4 test statistics. We're going to make a little plot and then see We're going to see whether two, which is our original data test statistic, whether two is extreme compared to all the test statistics that we'd get under the null hypothesis. All right, so maybe two is like here. And so then the p-value is going to be represented by this area. So we're going to go out and find the number of test statistics that are just as extreme or two as two or more extreme than two. So we're going to look at all of those resampled test statistics and count how many of those test statistics are just as extreme as two or more extreme than two. And more extreme means greater than two. Okay, so we count up all of those and then we divide by the Monte Carlo sample size, which was M. Here we said that was 10 to the four. Okay, so that's gonna be our p-value. So that kind of makes sense because the p-value, remember, in the classical hypothesis testing framework is the probability of seeing a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one that we got from our original data set compared to what we would get under the null hypothesis using the sampling distribution. So here the only difference is we've approximated the sampling distribution using computing. And so the p-value is not the probability, it's the approximation of the probability, it's the proportion of test statistics that are just as extreme or more extreme than our original data set's test statistic given the null hypothesis. Okay, so the original, uh, sorry, so the basic idea of the resampling here is that if truly mu1 and mu2 were equal, then there would be no relationship between the number of wings consumed and a person's sex. So if there's no relationship, that means that we would be able to randomly reassign these and shuffle them all around, and it wouldn't make a difference. But if it does make a difference, under the alternative hypothesis, mu1 is greater than mu2, if men do truly eat more wings than women, then we're going to see that our test statistic is going to not be fitting into that framework of the null hypothesis. And so we'll see a test statistic that's pretty extreme compared to the test stats that we'd see under the null hypothesis. 